Well, welcome to the Sports Wrap. He's George. I'm Ringer. And, uh, well, we're, we're, we're back on Zoom for another uh, week here, probably for maybe the next two weeks uh, as we work through and try to be safer during this time. And so hopefully everybody's uh, doing well and uh, and we're doing well, I think. So we are. Uh, where, where, where should we start, George? Um, I, I, I want to go uh, actually – Let's start some Big Ten football today, Tim. Big Ten football. Wow. I, yeah. I saw I saw an editorial in the Minneapolis paper. I think it was today that said they should shut her down. But well, I that's why I brought it up because I saw the I saw the same editorial. But but you know, I mean, the numbers they have currently thirty percent of the team players and coaches are under are infected. Thirty wow. percent. You know, and and uh, it's probably the largest infection rate in all of the Big Ten. They haven't had, and one of the arguments were it was that um, they probably are able to contain it in the bubble, but the the broad based community maybe not, and so they're running at this this issue all the time, and you know I think it's I, I, you know that they started the season under extreme political heat. <laughs> I wonder if Nebraska feels any differently about that now. I don't know. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, you would think they probably do, but they might have thought yeah, this might have been a season to forget. But I, I, I think that this is something that they, uh, you know, it, there's only been one week since the season started that there hasn't been a cancellation of each one game. You know, no Wisconsin last week, no Northwestern game this week. Uh, um, uh, the Gophers are scheduled to host Nebraska December 12th. Uh, I don't know what the odds are of that, but. Um, well, so you know they got they got early. they got two new uh, cases announced today that that put them up to what forty nine did I see twenty three yeah. players twenty six staff members you know that would include doctors coaches equipment managers whatever got to make sure I get the equipment managers in there because that, those are, are are important people. they are part of the staff you bet but uh, yeah I the, you know I just saw that they they figured that people only have to isolate for seven to 10 days now rather than the 14 days was announced and so that might change some of the things and of course michigan and maryland uh, gotta make sure i got that right it's there can. This week. and of course that's putting ohio state in jeopardy for the following week when michigan's supposed to be playing them because where where is michigan at you know uh, they played saturday but now usually if you miss one game you usually miss two games and of course ohio state has to play because if they don't have enough games and don't get to play in the Big Ten They're all done. Then they're not going to the Final Four. So yeah, uh, we'll see how the money. Well, pops. the money the money is going to scream here, but it, it was it was uh, like the one writer said, "Because you can, should you?" And and who can be surprised that the that the cracks didn't start happening, and maybe the maybe the whole deal's crumbling, uh, you know, down. I don't know. Well, I, I sure, mean, certainly look, hope not. Well, let's. Let, let, let's talk about things crumbling down and, and, and I don't know, things not being fair. So let, let's, let's take the Baltimore Ravens who have had yeah, their issues go. with COVID over the last few weeks. And then Denver has a big issue just before the game on Sunday and they don't postpone the Denver game for a couple of days so that they can get their act together uh, to see where everybody else is at. But we can po- postpone the Ravens game for, what six days until Wednesday afternoon? Hey, I think they like, install oh. they install a kid to play quarterback. He throws for seventy three yards in an NFL game against against uh, the New Orleans Saints. Uh, I wanted to put the guy off my shoulders and carry him off the field. I agree, but why, why? Why was Denver put in that spot and, and the Ravens weren't? That was the problem. Uh, that what, well, they, where they shouldn't. Have. Where's the fairness? There was no fairness, and, and and the only thing that they would have had to do was forfeit. Happens all the time, well, you know. And so, I mean, to me, are we are you saying okay, Baltimore is a playoff team, so we got to make sure they play the game at a safe time, so it's fair. And Denver, you don't have any chance to make the playoffs, so uh, suck an egg. You uh, can deal with a twelfth string quarterback. That's an exaggeration. You can bring a guy out the practice squad who hasn't played quarterback while he's been in the pros. And you're going to lose this game, no matter what you do. I, 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 I frankly, I, I saw the discussion on PTI the other day, and they were trying to defend it, and they were like, 
Denver got what they deserved. They shouldn't, whatever. And I'm like, well, how did Baltimore get what they deserved? And they, they have got more cases than yes. Denver had one and four yeah. people got exposed to it. Baltimore's got what, 17, 18, 19. And, and it's been and that it's, way for weeks. And, and it's been going on for weeks and, and they're, they're in a better situation. They get coddled. I, no, oh there's going to be more asterisks on on on, on the, <laughs> uh, the end of this season than you can shake a stick at, you know. And it's just, uh, uh, you know. But I take a look at it, and even 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 Pittsburgh, I mean, they played poorly. Their performance was really pretty poor. And Big Ben, what did he do? He was 36 for 51 for 266 and a touchdown, but he had to throw 51 passes. And uh, you know it, it, that's a, that's a lot of things can go wrong. <laughs> well, you know, and it's okay to put the the, the game in his hands, but uh, that's not the way Pittsburgh wants to win games. There's just no. No, doubt it isn't. That. That's not. That really wasn't their style. And 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 I think that the, I I don't think that any of them, um, um, considering you know just the the team that Baltimore had to field, um, you know, and I'll tell you right now, the Ravens when they're when they're totally equipped is a formidable opponent no two yeah. ways about it so it's uh yeah i uh, think yeah, goodell came on uh during halftime of the game yesterday basically said we're gonna we're gonna make this happen we don't care we're playing 256 games Becker high water we're gonna play them all we're gonna try to play them as close to on schedule as possible and we're not going into a bubble for the playoffs and we are and i'm just like well boy i hope you know, you you can say all these. This is the way it's going to be, but um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be very. The hockey, the hockey in the NBA is kind of showing us, and I'm not sure it was perfect at all. But bubbles about the only way you can do this, and uh, you know, and it's you, you, yeah. it's difficult to do with college kids. I mean, it may be impossible. It's like hurting cats, um, you know, and the pros as well. I mean, they're just they're just great. Well, big, no, big no, big no the NBA is coming back for their training camps because. Season starts three weeks from today. Yeah. I think it is, if I re remember right, or three three weeks from Tuesday. Excuse me. And so, what what are we what do we find out? They tested everybody when they came back to training camp, and almost thirty percent of them tested positive. Yeah, I'm just like, what the? And now they all got together, and thirty percent of them, three out of every ten of them got. I'm just like, oh. and and, and, and the, as contagious as that is. How long, how quick does that grow? And I mean, what's happening, of course, now is that we're going to wait another couple of a week, another week, and we're going to see uh, the Thanksgiving bump. Huh? And, 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 and that's just going to happen. It's going to um, happen. And what I'm afraid of with that is, and of course, what was talked about today, the Minnesota State High School League had a uh, meeting about trying to get things kickstarted uh, right after December 18th on the 21st. That first Monday after uh, the four weeks shuts down, and I, I don't see how the four how, how on December eighteenth that uh, Walls is going to say, "Oh, everything's good. We, we can we can go back to life as we were before the before the shutdown." I don't I don't see that happening. So, well, um, you I know, know, a lot of coaches. Walls, are there. Governor Walls is driving driving a, a, a runaway train here, and he's driving it fairly well. And it's just, you know, and, and, and uh, the amount of political heat that he's taking care of. I mean, oh. you have two s situations here. You have a medical situation and a political situation. They are, should be totally separate. When politics start interfering with your medicine, like I've seen happen several times, oh. it doesn't always come out. So we trust who, who we trust. And it's like, hey, when Michael Osterholm tells me that everything's cool, I'll believe it because He's a cynic. He's one of the best cynics Minnesota's ever produced. He is not going to say that until he believes it. Well, and then it came out today that Minnesota's got the second, hot, second highest rate of COVID cases per whatever number it is, next, but only behind South Dakota. And we're under a mask mandate. How, how either, either the masks aren't working or people aren't wearing the masks. So, uh, one or both of those is happening, and I don't think it's the masks aren't working. I just don't think people are are doing what they need to do. They're they're ignoring the science, but that's uh, maybe that's a conversation for a different show. Different well, you show. know, it used to be that it, it used to be that it would be, but now it's infecting all our sports. 
And so, you know, this is, you know, I mean, you and you brought it up when they start this football season. They says the biggest opponent is not going to be Mission. The biggest opponent is not going to be Wisconsin. The biggest opponent is going to be COVID-19. And that's what it's turned out to be. Absolutely. Let's talk about the Vikings game from Sunday so I can get all worked up. Ah. Because that would be uh, that would be ideal. I, 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 I have I it down there. Relaxed. The Vikings find a way. It was it was a dark and weary tunnel for most of that game. Did they find a way or did they get a gift? I, I, whatever it is, you know, it's like I, 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 I heard this this basketball player one time, and the guy says, every time you shoot a free throw, you cross yourself. Does that help? He says, sure, as long as I do my thousand shots a day. There you go. You know, and so it's it's and so you, you take a look at that was was uh, Chad Beebe praying on the bench after muffing the punt? <laughs> was he hoping to turn into a little guy and run into the corner where nobody could see him? Well, no, you know, he went on and caught a great, great pass. And I mean, I got a bunch of that great was pass. classic. Well, here's the, here's the thing about it. a lot of people are saying that the Panthers coaching staff did this wrong and did that wrong and whatever else. Well, if you watched Pittsburgh and Baltimore yesterday, what did Pittsburgh do on third and seven from their own, what, 22, 23 yard line, whatever it was, they threw on third down and he actually threw a bad, bad lobbed pass over the top of a linebacker in front of the team. But guess what? It's completed and nobody's going to ever complain that Pittsburgh threw on third down, could have stopped the clock. No, nah, Big the Ben can drop those. So when Carolina went for it down on the goal line and had a wide open guy, can you fault that the play was wrong? Yeah. Did he give nah. the chance for the Vikings to win? Yeah. The Vikings still had to drive whatever it was, 75 yards and and whatever else so um there were that that was such a wild weird drive you crazy game because it was just the vikings i've heard coaches tell me every play is great and every play is a piece of crap and you yeah. just don't know which play is going to come out but you know you've had your favorite plays just turn into ush and you wonder that was really stupid calling that play no this was just kind of the way right. things go sometimes. Yeah, that's kind of the things. So, the way things can, go. have you have you ever seen a team fumble on two consecutive plays and both of them get returned for touchdowns? No, you, you know, watch football but, for a lot of years. Yeah, like, no, I, and I hadn't seen that. My head was splashing. I thought I was watching ping pong. It was, uh, you know, and and so that was going all the time. But I'll tell you what, this was the second time in history that a team has passed um, to four receivers at least seven catches for 60 yards in the same game, you know, and, and, and this was without Adam, Adam Thalen. And I think that he had to go to it. BC Johnson, 70 for 74 yards, Justin Jefferson, seven for 70 and two TDs. I mean, Hey, this kid's going to be a superstar. Kyle Rudolph. Hey, I'll tell you, there are a lot of good tight ends in this league, but he's right up there with Kelsey or, or any of the rest of them, you know? Uh, and then of course, my good friend Chad Beebe. Um, I have a friend down in uh, down in the cities that that has met Chad, and it just he says greatest guy, just greatest kid, just goes on and on and on about him. And he says I almost I almost was in tears. And he says the punt was muffed, muffed, George. They get excited down there, but he got his first career touchdown, and it was a doozy. Yeah, and then scary part about that George was. <laughs> I was trying to tell him telepathically, you need to slow down. Don't score. Don't score. You're going to give him a chance. We almost, we almost, almost did. A chance to score. Yeah. Well, you know, muff punts, miss field goals, fumbles galore. Hey, if you didn't have a dog in this fight, it was a pretty good football game. A 28, 27, well, I you know, you were going to say if I didn't have a dog in a fight, I'd have turned the channel. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know, but you know, I, I tell you, Kirk Cousins kind of turned that whole, thing around and then that last drive uh he was under control and he he had it. the only thing was is that you weren't counting on Kyle Rudolph's 25 yard um so reception. so what's the so what's the difference what why why is he why is is he become such a good fourth quarter quarterback what's what's the difference and do you see something that makes him better than he was oh, the last two years because he's yeah, always I been under fire yeah. Dalvin Cook 
Delvin Cook? Do you, and, think and he's, actually, do you think he's gotten comfortable with the offense where he kind of knows what's good, what's going to be called, even though Kubiak's the new offense coordinator, Kubiak still had his hands in there last year. I think it's yeah. because I, I think he knows what to expect. He knows Kubiak, the offense. Kubiak was an excellent um, offensive coordinator. There's no oh, two ways about it. One absolutely. of the best. That's why he's where he's at. Um, but it's uh, no, I, I, I think he's, he's gotten, uh, he's, he can't win every game. We know that, but he no. can win three out of four, and that's what he's kind of doing right now. And I think, and you predicted this. I think they can make the playoffs. And yeah, I, I, yeah, you like I said, you go back and watch the tapes uh, from shows past. I thought they would when they got in, got rid of Ngakwe, that this was they were done. This thing's yeah. over. We're packing it in, and uh, somehow, some way, they they found a way, and uh, they. I mean the 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 numbers show that they've got as good a chance as any to get in. Um, we'll we'll see. They, of course, they got they can't lose the Jags on Sunday. Yeah, no, but I'm you know the the play of Eric Hendricks these days. Ah. If he's not a Pro Bowl linebacker, I don't know who it would be. I I'm I'm trying to visualize as an offensive opponent. What are you going to do about this guy? You, you can't run against him. He's so incredibly fast. You can't throw. He can leap and get up in the air he looks like he's having fun out there and uh considering he doesn't have his, his buddies he's, he's directing these young kids yeah he's it's almost too. you know some people can't handle that i have to step up and be that much better he has done that uh in a big way you know like you say he doesn't have bar around to uh to help out he just seems like keep keep it coming i'll i'll take care of business i'll take care of care of, care of business and and he is uh, uh but i mean i've seen him cover I cover really, really fast uh, wide receivers. I'll talk about uh, uh, a fast wide receiver. Um, I watched the game the other day with uh, Kansas City. Yeah. And uh, and Hill, Mr. Hill. Hill. Is he is he one of the fastest humans on the planet or what? He's got to be one. He, he's the fastest person in a football uniform. How well, fast I, he is I, compared I really to the to the world class sprinters? I'm not 100 percent sure. What would be fun, what would be interesting would be to take take the start out of the track and field part of it and just let them get wound up. And at 30 yards, they hit the proverbial start line. And then you tell me how fast he is. Uh, he, he, he's one of the fastest, but he's the fastest, he's the fastest man in a football uniform. I know that. No doubt well, about it. If, 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 if they hadn't figured out you can't cover him man to man, I don't know what you're going to do. And it, uh, he, they just can't do it. He was he was three and four and five yards ahead of everybody that was trying to cover him. It, it was 169 yards for one receiver. And then Kansas City kind of had to hang on to beat Tampa. What does that they tell us? They did. And, you know, and, 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 and uh, the first half for Mahomes was almost perfect. Yeah, I mean, he set a record 300 yards in the, in the first half. Uh, yeah, they, 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 they made some adjustments and. And you know who really kind of stood out was uh, Winfield. He is playing better and better and better back there. Yeah, looks comfortable. Yeah. He does. Comfortable. He does look. Of course, how about, who's surprised at that? No, nobody. No. How about how about the Lions firing Matt Patricia? Well, I think that was only a matter of time. And 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 of course, there's been a couple of old old uh, Lions on there that have been wondering why this this hasn't been done. But you know, but he came in with a heck of a resume. And and as a player and, and everything, and he had that he had that character look that they so badly wanted in Detroit. He just hasn't done the job. Well, I, I'll I'll go along those lines. Bill Belichick got his first head coaching job in go so well. Uh, yeah. Nick Saban came into the NFL, got his first head coaching job. Things didn't go so well. Pete Carroll came Alabama, into the NFL. Came back. Things didn't go yeah. so well. So yeah. my question is, who's going to give Matt Patricia another chance? to develop what he learned under so many years with Bill Belichick because Bill Parcells had Bill Belichick taught him everything he knew. Uh, they probably worked well together. Uh, Belichick comes out and like I said, had it fall on his face a little bit and then learned some things. No, a big, big man didn't go anywhere. He's, he's, he's alive and well in the NFL and he'll come into some, you know, offensive coordinator or def- and yeah, I think he'll that get that's a, probably he'll, who he's going to be. He'll get a coordinator position yeah. back again as, as defense coordinator for somebody for a year or two, and then somebody's yeah. going to say, okay, 
What'd you oh, learn? I put them on my staff in a heartbeat. Yeah. That kind of experience. How about Eric Bieniemy and him working on the same staff? Maybe. Ooh, huh? Yeah, might might be something to think about. Uh, let's see. Anything else NFL wise? That's that's what, everything I've got on my list. Uh, the Vikings will play uh, Jacksonville. Yeah, on Sunday. And, uh, and 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 like I said, I I have horrible feeling about that game. Horrible, horrible. And why is that? Because every time we play somebody we're supposed to thump, we don't thump them. We let them in the game. We leave them in the game. We come in with this attitude of, well, we don't have to show up right away. We'll turn it on when we want to turn it on. We find ourselves down 14 points or something. And then we got to dig ourselves out. And then sometimes we don't get it done. So I have a I'm not horrible. Sure, I'm not sure this football team has, uh, has any reason to be cocky. Uh, you know, they, they, they just don't because, you know, things move so fast. Like I said, I predicted the, the, the Cowboys to, um, uh, to to win the whole thing and that Minnesota would go down there and upset them. They still might I have a the chance. the whole deal on that one. They still might have a chance to do that, George. They might they make might. the playoffs. Yeah. They might make the playoffs at 5-10-1, and 10, one, whatever. And if so. they were in the NFC East, they, 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 they'd get the championship. It's, uh, huh? um, never know. I don't know who's going to come out of there. Yeah, it's a long way to go. You want to talk go for basketball? I do go for basketball. Couple of a uh, couple of wins against Loyola Marymount, the Alliance. They played play North Dakota last Friday, and then then Loyola Marymount and uh, Marymount. And I'll tell you, you know, they had this uh, Pepe something or other, long haired, <laughs> look looked tough. And it, and, and he fast Not only and looked moved. tough. He was or is he tough. was tough. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he so he was kind of fun to watch. And that second game, you know, it's hard to beat a team twice. And uh, and and then and then old Marcus kind of took control, but they had him shut down the first half. And then, but he when he came down, he wanted the ball in his hands. Patino wanted the ball in his hands. Everybody wanted the ball in his hands, and he canned it. Well, you know, the thing is, I he he he, he declared for the NBA draft. And he went and did the things, and he found out, either he found out or somebody told him, you're not good enough to be in the NBA yet. And he had a choice to make. I can pout about that and tell them that they're wrong, or I can go work my tail off and get better. And I think he took the second one. He, oh, I think As good as he might have been last year, he stands out this year. It's a different thing. I know it's only three games. Everybody don't, whatever me, what I'm saying is, he looks different. He, he's and it's not physical. It's confidence. It's the way he carries himself. It's the things that he's doing um, with this team. Uh, like I said, Kendricks said, "Give me more. I'll take care of it." Marcus Carr says, "Give me more. I'll take care Give of it." Give me more. I'll take care of it. And that's and 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 every one of those guys, if they're going to make it in the NBA, have to have that kind of confidence and that kind of skill. Uh, uh, you know, but it. it, it like I say, he he had enough confidence to do that, but just you know, against against the uh, Green Bay, he had thirty five points. The first win over Loyola, he had twenty eight, and then and then uh, the second game, well, only twenty six, uh, I think, if I remember. Yeah, right. yeah it was twenty six. Yeah. but he's so he's just drilling the heck out of the basket right now, and and uh, you know, and 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 nobody else is. And my friend yeah. Gabe. Gabe, my, my, I know, I know Patino's going to keep saying you got to keep shooting, you got to keep shooting it because he wants him to shoot himself back into into the rhythm. But if he hasn't found himself by the time the Big Ten season rolls around, no. uh, Gabe is going to find his minutes very limited because there's too much talent on this team for, and I know he can play some defense, but he's got, if he can't, if he's not shooting the ball and he's not a threat and the other teams don't have to defend him. Uh, well, I don't know. As long as, you, as long as you bring that up, the bench is they got a great bench. Huh? Uh, at least one I've seen. But they had um, uh, 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 16 points off the bench in the first game against Loyola Marymount, and and uh, you know 30 points in the paint, 19 points on turnovers. So they are doing this five points on second chances. It doesn't. I mean, they can they can improve their um, their rebounding. Uh, uh, and 13 points off the fast break. That's a nice, well-rounded offense. Well, I think that's the difference on, on Monday night when they played game two was that they, uh, Loyola got so many second chances 
uh, so many offensive rebounds. And the, and the color guy even said, the Gophers are just turning and running to the basket. Like, and I wanted to say, like high schoolers, like junior high kids, like JV kids. Because what do you try to tell the kid? When the shooter shoots, you're supposed to turn around, put your in his in his front side. First thing and, you do. And block him out. You don't run to the basket. You put your body on the guy. And we don't. We're playing man to man, George. Yeah. You know, when you're playing zone, it's a little tougher. But we're playing yeah. a lot of man to man. We should be a great rebounding team because we are playing man to man. I just. So yeah. how do you think Mr. Robbins is coming out? Hmm. He he he's your typical seven footer. He doesn't have a lot of touch. Um, gets himself. I think he's trying to prove too much. Uh, he's getting himself into foul trouble. He's trying to swat everything. Uh, rather than just going straight up and down, he he jumps into people rather than just jumping straight up. Um, so he's got some things to work on. But like I said, I think he needs to. Okay, you're here. Okay, you don't 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 try to do too much. Play within yourself. That would be my advice to him. What yeah, about you? And, I, and I think that's going to happen. Uh, you know, we all know how tough the Big Ten can be, and uh, so he, he, he's not going to be able to just go swat things like he did before. Uh, not in that league, and no. they do know how to box yeah, well, out. Yeah, and and like I said he he he's out there to do that, but he's got to do it wisely. It doesn't do us yeah. any good if he's got five fouls in fourteen minutes. Yeah, it, it doesn't get done what we need to get done. So Marcus, I, 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 I also want to bring up uh, the Gopher women. They beat Eastern Illinois the other day, uh, 72-68. And her first game in nearly two years, uh, a caddy Siskota, Sisoka scored 24 points and eight, eight rebounds. Now, um, uh, caddy, she's been hurt. What do you what do you know about her? Uh, just that she's bided her time, probably about the same thing that you read. And, you know, it's one of those things. Everybody's working on the transfer rule working to get people in and apparently Lindsay got her got herself a pretty good one from Syracuse so we'll take it well yeah yeah she's uh, everybody everybody seems to be real happy with her um now tonight UConn plays uh, Southern Cal and Florida at Boston College now I bring up Florida and Boston College because I'm going to watch that because yeah. um a week from Monday uh um uh the Gophers play Boston College they come Boston College comes to town. I got a friend of mine that teaches at Boston College, so I always like to give him a little bit of the business if I get a chance. And then also Gonzaga. Uh, they beat oh, West yes, Virginia the, the other day, but they had a bit of a scare. Oh, yes, they did. And uh, Suggs went down, and it looked like it was a pretty bad ankle. You know, he is the, he is the top-ranked freshman in the country. <laughs> and I just like, oh, so they're actually counting on him to do. Well, they taped him up. They didn't want to do it. He talked himself back onto the court. And I don't know. I don't, but he directed. He's he's on the court. They're a better team. Oh, no I, I think it. there's no doubt, no doubt about that. He yeah. is, uh, he's, uh, he, he's going to be a top 10 pick. Uh, and if he doesn't get himself hurt, he's just going to be a top 10 pick in the NBA draft. He's, he's a one and done. He's, he's on his way. And uh, yeah, I, I, he, he, you're right. They're a different team when he's on the floor. It, uh, you can tell the difference. Um, you anyway, want to talk um, about on Monday just, night, Marcus Carr yeah. hit that game-winning shot, right? Yeah. At the buzzer. Then I think yeah. there was a game winner on Tuesday night, and then last night, well, or no, that was Texas and uh, North Carolina on Tuesday North night. North Carolina. Then there's a little local touch from last night. If you go on to my, if you go find me on Twitter, I retweeted yeah. this last night. Uh, do you remember Heaven Hamling? Hamling from Grand Rapids? I do. She, yeah. she graduated here two, three years ago, I, I do. think. And she basically, she came across the half court line. She was basically within her shooting range. Well, she's starting for uh, North Dakota State right now. She hit the game winning shot at the buzzer last night and she went off the dribble with her right hand dribbled it behind her back not through her legs behind her back caught it with her left hand pulled up and drained the shot to win not too well, yeah, that's that's what i used to do when i was young too yes uh, yes that's what we all used to do, yeah. <laughs> do when we were younger so yeah. I, I you know whenever we can talk about a local kid uh, doing good and i don't know like i said northern minnesota kid to me uh doing very well 
Um, you know, Heaven Hamling, uh, like, I, like I said, that's Division One basketball. So uh, kudos to her. And uh, you know, Grand Rapids turns these out every once in a while, and it's uh, uh, you know, it's, usually as a hockey I, player. I, 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 <laughs> That's not a hockey player. Exactly. Hockey no, I'm, 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 uh, I'll keep an eye on it. I'll tell you, North Dakota, North Dakota State, South Dakota, South Dakota State, those are hungry teams. And they go and they have no problem uh, playing these Division One teams and they beat them once in a while and I always give them a good game. So and all the, I, I, and all the men's teams, and all four of those North Dakota teams and South Dakota teams are getting together to have a, a little tournament here next week. It's going to be on. Midco uh, number cha channel 33. Right. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing when they play each other because obviously those are rivalry games to boot. But uh, like I said, they're trying to show what they can do to possibly get in the tournament as well. Yeah, no, it's, 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 uh, uh, you know, I'll tell you, but the game that I'm going to watch on Saturday is Gonzaga and Baylor, number one and number two. And Baylor kind of took care of business with Illinois last night. And, and that's not that easy to do. Uh, so you know, what, what's what's the deal with Illinois being five and Iowa being like four in the nation? What, where, when did Iowa and Illinois become hotbeds? Uh, you know, and Michigan State's ranked eighth. I mean, well, is this, is this why and and, and, uh, some of the rest of these guys and they got a good team, but they 82 69 and and Baylor was pulling away. Now, either Illinois isn't as strong as we thought he would be. Or Baylor Bears might be just tough, but and me, if they're tough, then then them and Gonzaga they should have what we used to refer in wrestling as a lip ripper. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But I'm you know th those two teams could be in the Final Four, and oh, uh, yeah. you know the way just the way it's kind of coming out. Also, Tim, there's two football games on tonight. Louisiana Tech. That's Terry Bradshaw's. Uh, um, Alma mater. School, I believe, uh, playing North Texas. That's going on as we speak. And then a little bit later, Utah State and Air Force will be are, are playing. Oh, and you're going to be triple uh, optioning? Yeah, they they. I, <laughs> I little. I got to get a little triple option. It's like coffee in the morning. <laughs> yeah, there you go. As long yeah. as you brought college football back up, I do want to say this. I have a a friend who we correct AP calculus tests in Kansas City every year. Yeah. And he's a Michigan State alum. And he put out on the Facebook the other day that Mel Tucker, who's the head coach at Michigan State, has beat two top 10 teams already this year. That's as many top 10 wins as Jim Harbaugh has in six seasons. Six <laughs> seasons at Michigan. Yeah, stick it right in Jim Harbaugh. Anytime no, I, I can know, give Jim Harbaugh a slam, I got to take it. No, and I and and like you said, you know, I mean, it takes a, it takes a certain finesse to do a, a top tier Division One football team, and whatever happens, you know, uh, uh, Saban has it, uh, uh, you know, and 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 he he wouldn't go back to the pros of his life dependent on it. Harbaugh maybe yeah. go to work for his brother. Probably. Um, yeah. 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 I, I think I he wants know. to be his own boss, though. That's why I, I wonder what he'll do. But anyway, yeah. Who? Wh I mean, what chance did you give Michigan State on beating Northwestern on Saturday? Oh, none. And I sat none. there and watched it, and, and they dominate. I mean, they, they they beat Northwestern. There was no two ways about it. That was no fluke. Absolutely. Um, and 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 it was fun to watch. Um, it I was. you know, I, not that I'm a Michigan. I, mean, I wanted to beat no. each other up, but as long as we were there. I did not think they were going to be able to do that. So, as we mentioned, Gopher football also canceled again. I know we said that earlier, but yeah. Um, just, yeah, hopefully they'll be able to get the last game in, and we'll see what happens on the 12th. We'll see what happens on the 12th. The 12th is also the Army-Navy game. I just thought I'd yeah. yeah. So, uh, there, there's a whole bunch of random other stuff. Where do you want to – I'll, I'll just pick. Because I'm Let's excited about one. this. How about a little Major League Baseball? Hey, what do you want to talk about? Well, you know, we lost Obama. Bomba. I don't probably. I, I honestly don't think that that is a a shock, and I don't think b it's a bad thing. Uh, we we his twelve or thirteen or fourteen million dollar contract. We can we can spread fourteen million dollars to a couple of different places 
Uh, I'm more concerned maybe about losing Trevor May. Yeah, and that's I think that that's what they were trying to do is protect some of those other guys like like Trevor uh, May and you know, yeah, and, you know and you, they got a they got a very expensive pitching staff there too, very talented one. Uh, but uh, you know, they, they, I understand they have a pretty wide budget and uh, you know. Uh, well, are, of are course, gonna, you know, there's been the discussion about Nelson Cruz and us, you know, obviously wanting to re-sign him and whatever else. But you know, now they're talking maybe the National League is going to go to. A DH, and all of a sudden you go from 15 DHs to 30 <laughs> DHs, and all of a sudden the money starts talking. So the Twins also got to be thinking about, okay, who's going to be our DH? Uh, possibly because we may not get Nelson Cruz, even though he's going to be 41 years old. We we may not get him back, and so um, he's as good a DH as there is in, the, in baseball right now. Uh, you know, uh, and everybody knows it. Yeah, and you know, he was playing at the end of the year. I don't think at 100% and still, you know, getting, thing, getting things done. So, yeah. Um, anyway, but yeah, I like I said, the, the whole Rosario becoming a free agent thing, I don't think was a big surprise. I know there's a certain part of the Twins fan population that wanted him gone in the middle of the season last year because he just does stupid Eddie Rosario like things, you know, like running through the stop sign at third base. Yeah, getting thrown out by four steps. Uh, those things for baseball purists. Uh, that kind of turns us off. I'll I'll put myself in that. I those oh, things. I, I am too. Yeah, you those don't things do don't sit well with me. So no, no. What I am excited about though, George, with Major League uh -huh. Baseball, is that the Twins announced their new affiliates this year. For next and season. that is. Well, you no. know the triple the triple A team used to be in Rochester. Yeah. How many times do you get to Rochester, New York to see the guys that are going to be playing in Hardly the majors? Hardly ever. Now they're going to be in St. Paul. In St. Paul. Smokes. Isn't that great? Holy smokes. We're going to, you can, I mean, are they going to have to add on to the stadium so they can get enough people in there so I can, you know. They, they, when, when the Saints were hot, it was hard to get tickets. It was hard, hard, a lot harder to get tickets for them than it was the Twins. And then, of course, the Twins announced that their double A team that used to be playing in Florida and now is going to be in Wichita, Kansas. Now, I understand Wichita can be a little warm in June and July with, with whatever it's soaking Florida. But here's here's the beauty of it, baseball fans. Here, here, here Here's what Tim's already been thinking. You can go down to the cities and you can watch either your triple A team and the Twins or both, hopefully. <laughs> then you drive into Iowa and the class A team plays in Cedar Rapids. So that's like four hours. And you jump in the car the next the next morning and you drive to Wichita, which is maybe five, six hours, and you get to watch the double A team. And then maybe you zig over to Denver or maybe back to Kansas City or maybe across to St. Louis and you make a trip back up through Chicago. And, and in a seven or eight day trip, all of a sudden you you've seen a whole bunch of baseball. And uh, I, I like I like the new setup. I, I already told Anna, I said, we gotta go. And she's like, let's get it planned out. So I can't wait for the schedules to come out uh, for these minor league teams because next summer. Well, you in really are in a good position to do that because you, you you do have time off. Your son is just at a point where he would love it. He he and wasn't so excited about the baseball, but when I told him we, we, we'd be staying in hotels and swimming. Oh, oh yeah. Go yeah, ahead. Dad, let's go. Hey, let's go right now. Absolutely. Let's go, so. I Absolutely. was I'm very excited about that the Twins have their, their minor league teams closer to home now uh well, me, I, I think going to st paul and watching watching uh whatever the, the saints or whatever they call yeah. themselves i think that'd be great yeah that would, would that's uh that's uh that's paul veck you know baby all the way i think is is, is his kid still running the you know i don't know for sure if he's still if he's, is still running the team there Vec was running the team i'm not 100 percent sure if he's i think he is but i'm not you know it, well, I didn't me, want to branch off, but Bill Vex one of my favorite characters of all time. He's, Anything uh, he, else baseball wise you want to talk about? No, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, no, I was just going to talk about Eddie and 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 the opening changes of of uh, the Twins. You know, I don't uh, I don't like the I don't necessarily like to talk about uh, basketball NBA trades. Yeah, but last night this is good. Houston traded Russell Westbrook to. Washington for Washington. John Wall and a first round pick. Yeah. Can, can you tell I'm a little confused? I... Well, and there's a lot of people confused. In fact, if the opening sentences of the story 
should have had a question mark <laughs> at it. So yeah, I was it it was it was confusing, and I think you're going to see. I th you know this is just the beginning of the trade season before that before the regular season starts. So I you're going to see a lot of different changes. You know when I saw a picture I, I saw a picture of Marco Rubio, huh? or of uh, uh, Ricky Rubio. Oh, does he, he's a, he is not that scrawny little kid from Spain anymore. <laughs> he's a full grown he's a full grown beater. And, and he's either a good liar or he's happy to be in Minnesota. I'm not sure which. Well, I, I mean, don't know, but he he apparently said the most fun he's had or the place that he's most enjoyed playing NBA basketball is in Minnesota. And I'm kind of like, man, I don't believe you because <laughs> January in Minnesota isn't as nice as Phoenix in January. I, so I guess he can say what he wants. I hope he's telling the truth. I hope he's happy to be here. Uh, I think he can help us out, uh, help out a young team. So we'll see what happens. I've just, you know, I mean, we've been waiting. I mean, we've got, we've, we've had Timberwolves here for a long time. And so we've been waiting for the right composition. I, you know, and I think right now, uh, there, it, it, maybe this is the perennial optimism in me, but, but it's, it looks like maybe they might have, you know, five men with three backups to to get the job done um at least and that, by that i mean make the playoffs uh making the playoffs is, is a start you know you, you can't go from not making the playoffs for how many years every years it's been uh or one out of the last how many every years to uh, going to the nba championship because we know that the system is rigged uh where you're never going to be able to do that because there's only yeah. three or four teams that can win it every year pretty much i'm going to say three or four and of course, LA kind of the Lakers kind of took care of that in the last 36 hours or 24 hours when they signed LeBron for another two years, and then they signed Anthony Davis to his max, you know, five years for 190 million. And so they kind of put the Lakers in a spot that they think is going to be keep them uh, relevant for the next uh, few years, and they probably should be. They've got two of the top 10, 12 players in the in the league. Well, they should, and I'll tell you, I, you know, I, I spent some time with the NBA this year, like I hadn't in a long, long huh? time. There are some very good teams there, and there are some terrific individuals. Um, I'll be watching the NBA closer from now on. There. Did, did you hear what your good boy Zion Williamson had to say? No. What did he have he, to say? He said that last year he was trying to play things safe. He was trying to make sure that he was doing things correctly. This year, you should look for him to loosen up and start to play basketball. And I'm kind of like, huh. he, he's 20 years old and he really didn't play very hard last year. Or maybe not hard, but, you know, he was trying to whatever. And so, uh, boy, it's going to be interesting to see what he can do this year. Uh, if well, that's, I've seen if that's him play against LeBron a couple of times and, and LeBron takes him to school. And, oh. uh, you know, and it's just, and he's got all those incredibly physical talents. I think he'd be a great tight end. He'd be um, an outstanding tight end. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, but he, he's, he's got those, he can jump, you know, and I always think, can he land? <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Charles Barkley, he wasn't very tall and he, he could oh. get up in the air and, and uh, you know, and, and he, he, in fact, he couldn't palm a basketball. <laughs> His uh, hands are too small. He could do I anything else that. though. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, loons. You want to talk to loons? Oh, I do because they're playing uh, in about forty-five they're, they're minutes. Kansas City, they're, and they're on right now. I think. Where well, seven thirty. I think seven thirty, and uh, as we take this on Thursday night, of course, they were supposed to play last night, uh -huh. but the NFL it's Thursday, and the NFL doesn't have a Thursday night game. No, they don't. So they called them up and said, "Hey, Fox says you want to move the game from FS1 to national TV for." Uh, for a ma and I'm sure Minnesota can't <laughs> say, sure we'll wait an extra 24 hours so we can play on national TV. Not that the cable networks aren't in a lot of people's houses, but you know, uh, this will allow my uncle Paul to watch. He's excited about it because you don't get to watch the loons very often. So, um, you know, the loons have not played well. I think I said this last week, possibly on Friday, the loons have not played well in Kansas city four times. And not since they, especially since they got their new stadium down there. Yeah, they call it the uh, blue hell playing tonight. So they, they call, they call the field, the blue hell, the blue, because they've been there four times and they've got waxed. So yep. it's a, uh, 
it's time um, it's time for the worm to turn that's what i say it yeah absolutely no i i, I read the story and i was uh it was it was convincing that boy the guys are serious to go down there and try to pull one yeah i hope that uh things uh, go well obviously this would get them into the uh western conference finals against uh-huh. uh, against uh, seattle i think if i remember right so um, I'm hoping that uh, we'll have a couple more weeks. Uh, I think the the MLS Cup I think is on December 12th. I think that, that day is filling up, especially if the Loons are playing in it. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I said let's I, let, let's talk a little college hockey. Well, see, I knew you wanted to wrap up with the good stuff. Yeah, well, I, the thing of it is, is that you know, I mean, I noticed that uh, that North Dakota won their game. And that uh, UMD won their game. Won their games, how about games? And so oh, I knew that I knew that was going to get you really excited. <laughs> and uh, you know, so 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 tell me what you saw. You know, the the, the Bulldogs lost a lot of their uh, defensive core yeah, uh, to, to the NHL. I mean, uh, Sandberg and uh, Wolf and uh, Perinovich, and you lose your goaltender and uh, yeah. And so all of a sudden you're kind of like, eh, what's going to happen? And then the first period uh, on Tuesday afternoon, they're playing the home team, you know, Omaha's at home and playing in their own building. And it was like kind of a little scary. And then they really stunk up the place in the second period. And I'm like, oh, this could be a long season. And then all of a sudden, I like UMB seems to do, they find a way and they score four times in the third period. And then, you know, last night they played Denver. Denver's ranked, uh, depending upon which poll you're looking at, in the top five in the nation, along with UMB and North Dakota. And uh, the Bulldogs, again, found a way, went 2-1, get a couple of uh, power play goals in the third period. And and uh, uh, Fanti, the new goaltender, he, he, he looked a little shaky in that first period, but it was his first college hockey basically ever in a game that was for real. It wasn't an exhibition game, so uh, he 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 showed himself well. I I have I have some confidence in in what we've seen, and um, they talked about uh, Kaiser from Andover, the freshman, and we were uh-huh. he, he didn't look so hot the first period and a half, but I didn't get to see the third period last night. But apparently he was on the ice. We froze. Uh, well, he was on the ice for six on four, and uh, he he made a couple of big stops, even though he's not the goaltender. And uh, it played well. So Scott Sandlin's got him working, got him playing well. So yeah, well, you know, Scott's got a nice book. He knows what he's doing. He's he's had great hockey teams. He's not going to put up with. He's going to want another one. That's just kind of the way the man is. <laughs> well, and I think I think that's that's a that, that's a great way of looking at it. The thing is, uh, when you get to play the Denver's and you get to play the uh, North Dakotas uh, on a regular basis, say. Uh, you 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 stay sharp the entire season and you are uh, your playoff ready uh, at the end. So uh, you know the the commercials have been on uh, NCHC for the last four national champions, et cetera, et cetera. It's 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 high quality hockey, and when you uh, when you win a game in the in in the NCHC, you're you're doing some good stuff. Well, I, I when when I was at UMD, Ralph Romano was the coach, and and hockey was. Uh, uh, it, it, hockey was just giving it, having it birth at UMD and they just joining the WCHA and, and they started, you know, playing out before that they were in the, the MIAC. And, uh, right. um, uh, and so, you know, they, once they got in there, uh, I, I, and, and, and this is true. I one time saw a gopher, uh, UMD game and, uh, and, and w- w- when the fight was over, the coach, uh, uh, uh the gopher coach, um, had had a tie on and his jacket and the shirt was gone, so they th- this th- they really teed off at each other and and uh, uh, and uh, you know it was it was a brutal game but they, it's the first time that UMD beat the U that was big time. Yeah, I I would have to believe that that to be the case and of course yeah. those are those are some uh, rivalries that we don't get to see as often anymore because no, uh, we just don't. the Gophers, of course, are 4-0. and They're in the in the Big Ten, and they're actually on tonight as well. I don't know. I may have to have both TVs on to while well, I'm correcting papers, doggone it, uh, to, to get this stuff done and have the games all on 
Uh, so we'll see what happens. It's a, it's a getting to be a busy time again now that college hockey, of course, is on just about every well is on every day because oh, it's odd and uh, keeping things busy. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. So um, suppose, you know, as I look at the clock, I suppose it's obituary time. It is, and I was hoping to get by this week, except that most of these guys that we obit. And there were pretty exciting times and, and pretty exciting guys. And I want to talk about Rayford Johnson for a minute. He's 1960 decathlon champion, Olympic decathlon champion. But but he, he I believe he was in the 56 Olympics and might have even been in the 52. But but uh, Rayford Johnson in, in 1960 was considered the finest athlete in the world. And there was nobody that was going to tell him otherwise. Uh, to, to watch a guy throw the shot put that far and run that fast. And then, and then, um, uh, like, do really well in the mile because he was a lot bigger than a lot of the rest of those guys. Uh, he really showed. And like I say, we had Bob Mathias, and you had, and you had Al Otter, and you had well, Al Otter was more of a discus thrower, but you had these great decathlon champions. Uh, he, he was, he was, he was big time. And he, of course, he went on and became a movie actor, and um, uh, he, he. He became a director of Special Olympics, if you can believe that, and and uh, went on to do all kinds of uh, uh, civil things. And um, yeah, I, I didn't realize he was there uh, when when Martin Luther King was assassinated. He was there when Robert when Robert Kennedy. He was Martin Robert King. Kennedy's partner, and he was there. In fact, he tells the story. He he took the gunman down. And took the gun away and put it in his pocket. And that night, after all the thing was there, he went home and took his coat off. And he looked down; the gun that killed Robert Kennedy was still in his pocket. Wow! And so, uh, you know, no, he's the guy was 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 a real live American hero. And uh, 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 it's uh, let me see. I'm trying to find what he was in none but the brave with frank sinatra and uh wild in the country with elvis presley oh and a james bond licensed to kill oh. so i so, did not know that one I, yeah. I i'm gonna have to go look for him yeah rafer he had a good life wherever he's running now i hope he's running well yeah. well i have to say as long as we're talking about movies yeah. i was watching i was watching raiders of the lost Ark. oh Maybe. one of my faves Okay, so I've seen it maybe, what, uh, 75 times? I don't think that's an exaggeration. Yeah, I know. On well, TV, yeah. you got to stop and watch it. So when he's, when he's getting the arc onto the ship, there's a guy talking to him. And I'm like, that's Dan Aykroyd. Never knew that Dan Aykroyd was in the movie. I've watched it how many times. I didn't realize it until, like, Saturday uh, night. Uh, I'll have and to catch Ak it, but Ackroyd, he, he uses voiceovers. He, he, he works quite a bit, you know, and it's, uh, we were talking the other day about, uh, um, a, you know, if John Bellucci was still alive, oh Ackroyd and Bellucci and Bill Murray, uh, 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 these guys would still be, they'd still be crazy. Uh, but, uh, but it, it was really too bad about John Bellucci class of 67, you know, and, uh, uh, uh he was, uh, in fact, his brother said that he thought that probably uh, some of his uh, drug addiction and stuff came from um, came from head hits, and he thought that he might have had some wow. some uh, some brain injury. So, okay. but uh, no, that's uh, we had to get off on a little bit of a tangent. But hey, that's what are. this show's all about: is tangents. Tangents, yes, yes. So, what uh, I I know you've been so busy watching sports. 24 7 you probably even haven't had time to listen to any music you know i tell you i it was um i i had a i had a i had a birthday as of late and, and yes my I, wife... I, I i i failed as a uh, as a as a uh co-host of a show with you and as a friend <laughs> to wish you a happy birthday so let me say yeah. that here happy, happy birthday well thank you and my wife I, I, hey she's what would i do without her she give me a double album of the Mavericks, that's in Spanish, oh, wow. and these are these are all uh, you know, Latino type guys, and so this is the first album they've ever put out in Spanish, and 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 uh, uh, Raúl Malo, who is in my mind one of the most beautiful troubadours in the world, sings these songs, and Sue and I have seen them a number of times. So I haven't listened to the album yet. I told her that we would listen to the album, but only the, the first time when we're together and then after that um i 
Can't make any guarantees. No, nah, no guarantees after that. Not around music. Uh, music and history books, you know, if they're around, I'm going to be there. That's for sure. Yeah. And, of course, the uh, State High School League uh, met today. And they uh, kind of gave the uh, – they got three plans in place, all depending upon what Governor Walls decides for uh, sports. But they've got a lot of things that are kind of decided, but we won't know what's going to happen. But they have said they made a mistake in the fall. One of the uh, directors said today they made a mistake in the fall by saying there would be no state tournament. They should have waited and made that decision prior to this right at that time. They should have made that decision in September or October. They should have waited until November to decide whether those things could have been done, if they could have done things differently. And uh, so for the winter seasons, they are going to uh, sound like they'd like to be done with the winter seasons, maybe like by early April. So kind of push everything back. Maybe the state hockey tournament isn't that first full week in March. Maybe it's the third week of March. And it might be played at the same time as maybe the state girls basketball tournament because they want to kind of overlap things and, sure. and, and whatever. So uh, stay tuned. The state high school league is doing some things, uh, trying to be proactive and give everybody an idea, but at the same time saying, okay, let's, let's think about this, but we're not going to put and say, look, boys hockey tournament is going to be March 15th to March 18th. And we're setting it there and that's the way it is. And if it can't be, no, they're saying, let's wait till February. Let's see where we're at with the virus. Let's see where we're at with vaccines. And once we know what's happening there, we'll, we'll play it out and we'll make the decisions then, which uh, seems to be a, a much wiser choice. The prep section in the Tribune did a, a, a highlights of, of, of all the top athletes, mostly in the metro area in the southern half of the state. But there are some really fantastic athletes down there. I mean, the, these are these are kids that are going to Division One schools all over the place, and and uh, you you would have liked to have had a chance to watch them play. They would have liked to have had a chance to be seen play, and uh, you know. And so you watch these, and you just think, yeah, I, there are some good athletes, and if we can protect them, that's great. It's just that I think we got to take 2020 and rub it out as a bad dream and uh and and you know go for go for the next one as best we can yeah let's hope that uh, 2021 we're uh, eli and i were just discussing that on the on the way to school this morning that there's only like three weeks left in 2020 and then we're going to get a new year and he was pretty excited about that and i said yeah that sounds that sounds like a good idea we, we need a new year and we need new things because 2020 uh, does have to go the way of the dodo it needs to go away he will remember this the rest of his life. I mean, yeah, despite only being five most of the year, he will yeah. remember it and it'll, it will uh, stick out. I think that's, uh, you don't have to be five or 55. It's going it's to stick it's out. Just, as I watch these years. kids, Eli's age, that they, they so miss kids at that age love school. I mean, they live for school. That's where their friends are. They love their teacher. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, yeah. In that age, you know, and and when they can't have that, that's that, that's really denying them a ton. So yeah, we want to get back. We want to get these vaccines. Uh, yeah, I like shots as well as the next guy, so I'll, I'll take my shots. Right, right uh, but uh, you know, we've got to we've got to get a grasp of this. It's it's really hard on our kids. It's hard on us. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else for the good of the cause? No, I got some music I want to play though, and it's a really remarkable piece, and I I, I um. I'm going to show you right now. Oh, man. Where will people think of Where next, George? I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what we come up with. Unbelievable. You you, you take care and uh, and watch yourself out there. Hey, absolutely. And, of course, next week we're going to get back Army-Navy. We're going to get Army-Navy. Yes, we are. 
And uh, uh, you wouldn't believe that the shirts they're trying to sell me. Well, I can just, just about imagine. I oh, can no, just imagine. But, but, you know, there's these beautiful football jerseys for like 50 bucks, you know, and they're just cool. I could use a whole drawer full of those. But you might not believe this. My T-shirt drawer is just all clogged up. In fact, my T-shirt right now today is it's it's a, a philosophical T-shirt. A guy named named Ray Nitschke. No, no, huh? Nietzsche. Ray Nietzsche. He wrote down, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And then it goes down, except bears. Bears will kill you. <laughs> and so this is, this is uh, that's, that's my statement of philosophy on this fine evening. I don't know if I can get that even more. Wow. Yeah. But bears you, will you, kill you. You, you. you do have an interesting array of t-shirts, no doubt about that. Yeah, you, well, not as, not as interesting as your hats. But, uh, <laughs> I should have put one on today, are. maybe. So. All right, everybody. Thanks yeah. for watching. We'll talk to you next week. We'll see week. you next week, huh? Yep. Have a good one. You too.